Today I'm actually going to get this little door skin project finally finished up. Um, I've got this primarily done. I've got one little bracket left to make and I know I described how I did it in the previous video. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I bent it up, how I you know, fit everything, drill in the hole, stuff like that. Like I said before, it's not rocket science, but you know, I know for some guys it can seem overwhelming and it's, it's hard to wrap your head around just doing the steps if you've never done anything like that before. So I'm going to show you real quick um, how I did it for this particular scenario. Um, this obviously isn't something you do on a streetcar um, unless you're, I don't know, unless you want to race people at stoplights or something. But uh, for a, for a full-fledged race car like this that sees nothing but track duty, you know, trying to get it as light as possible and eliminating things like door hinges is a good way to, you know, scrap extra weight. So um, let's uh, go ahead and dig in here quick. So I'm basically starting with just these little one inch tall and I think they're like uh, four or five inch long pieces of aluminum. Um, I've got this one marked off at an inch, which is actually a little bit too long for this last bracket. So I gotta back that off to about three quarters of an inch. And that's where my first bend is gonna be right there, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and verify what my actual length needs to be. So all I do is put it in place where it's actually going to live. Just like this up here. And I'm going to draw a little line. Actually, we'll be all right with the one inch there. Okay, stand corrected. So that's my one inch mark. That's the line I actually drew. Um, being a little bit short is fine because up top of this, the, uh, the sheet metal bends like that. Yeah, it comes over. Anyway, being a little shorter is better in this case. So I'm gonna bend that up really quick, and all I do is set it in my vise and pound it over with a hammer. so I can kind of sneak up on the correct angle. So, oh yeah, we got a long ways to go here. So we'll, uh, I think we can go a full 90 on this. So I don't need to go, you know, I don't need to break out a sledgehammer and go full ham on this and, and beat the piss out of it, okay? You know, just tap it down to where you need it. Right, fit check. And, okay. So now, pretty close. I think if I give it a little over 90 bend, we'll be almost right on. Inside the inside of my corner to be just up above the vise here, so I can bend it down past. So now we've got a bend that's just past 90 degrees there. this because I want this to come up a little bit more 
and be parallel to the door here. And you want to make sure when you're doing something like this, make sure everything's lined up where you want it. Because if you make marks and they're not where you need them, then it's not going to fit right when you get to the end. I know this has to come out a little right there. So I just made a couple marks, okay? So as that's sitting in there, this is where the door is. So I'm gonna have this bend up, you know, just a few degrees here, so it sits flush with the door. Just a minor little bend there to start with, see how close we are. It's pretty good there. Okay. So now I am just a touch long here, so I'm gonna take a little bit of material off the end here so it's not sticking out past the uh, edge of the door um, and just kind of clean it up so I don't have sharp corners on there. And then after that, we're gonna start uh, marking and drilling holes. sharp edges. I don't like cutting myself if I don't have to. And especially in this kind of scenario where, you know, in the back seat here we could very well have like a, a cooler for a cool suit system. So people are going to be going in and out of that door or through the window hole um, to change out coolers or refill the cool suit system. So we don't want people catching their suits and uh, things like that on, on sharp edges as they go in and out. figure out where to drill our holes. So again, you need to get your placement correct. And actually, before I even do that, I'm going to make some lines to show me where the bracket is going to land. So when I go to drill holes later, I know where I'm supposed to be.
All right, so I made some marks on the sheet metal, so I know where this is going to land. Now I'm going to go over. I'm going to use a center punch and, and punch a mark where I'm going to drill my first hole. And this is just going to be a pilot hole because once I get that located, I'm going to come back here and I'm going to center punch through that hole into the sheet metal so I can make sure I drill it in the correct spot. easy to work with, it's easy to drill, lightweight, it doesn't rust, okay, so I'm going to set this on here and make sure I have my bracket sitting on the, or in between the lines I drew earlier, and then I'm going to go in there on the back side and I'm going to center punch through that hole I just drilled, and that's going to give me my first location for my hole back here. And that's going to be the hole where my uh, rivet nut goes. to be slightly bigger. I think there's a that's what she said joke in there somewhere. Again here. Make sure. Oh, come on. You know, you'd think after I did this like 20 times, I'd be a lot more proficient. drilled. 
but I'm just stepping up in drill size. Um, I like to start with a pilot hole and, and step it up a little bit each time until I get to the correct size hole I need. Just because it makes it easier, it's easier on the bigger bits, you're not burning up the tips of your bits so fast. So now the hole in the bracket, it only needs, big, needs to be big enough to get the bolt through, okay? That's an M6 bolt. The hole in the body of the car is going to be a little bit bigger because this threads into the rib nut, or the rivet nut, which is this guy here, okay? So we're going to drill the hole in the car big enough to get that through. And then this just threads in there and holds everything together. You know, the sheet metal is going to be sandwiched in between here. Normally I would have just used this step bit all the way through, but this section right here is all burned up on the bit, so it's kind of useless right there, it just stops. Um, but anyway, I've gotten past that point now with using my other drill bits. So if you can see, I've got some red marker on this area right here. That's how far I need to go. So that's a good little trick. If you've got a hole you need to drill, but you don't need to go all the way through, or you only need a certain depth, you can take a marker, or a piece of tape and mark your bit. So as you're drilling, you can see that color spinning and you know that's how far you need to go. specialty tool so this is a rivet nut gun all right so basically it's similar to a rivet gun but you've got two handles so you thread this guy on here okay without cross threading it all right and now you have to pull the pull the arms out when you do that because when you squeeze this now it's going to squeeze this nut down and it's going to expand the back side behind the sheet metal and that's what's going to hold it in place. Stick it through your hole. And then you got 
to manually unthread it, get it out of there. I'll show you real quick here. So that right there is what you get. That expands out and holds everything in place, okay? And then you can take your bracket or your, your bolt, whatever you have there, and fumble around like me and try to get it to thread in with one hand. Um, so anyway, that'll thread in there and you can get it nice and tight and hold things in place. Bracket will go there. And now the last thing we're gonna do is we're going to drill through here and just put in a standard rivet and we'll end up with that sort of deal there, okay? Put you back in your home. standard rivet gun, got my rivet in there, just push it in there. You want to make, you want to try to get your two pieces of material as tight together as you can. So you're going to be pushing on this as you do it. You also want to try to make sure you're squeezing on this and you're doing it while this is all straight. And then, there you go. So and all that does is it just breaks off the pin inside of the rivet there because it expands, expands inside that sleeve and then eventually just breaks off. All right, so pull you guys out one more time here. So that is essentially the door. Um, I'm gonna pause this here for a minute and I'm gonna pull this door off now so I can show you guys what I did 
with the patch down there on the bottom to finally unscrew my grotesque work that I had done earlier. So bear with me a second here. Okay, we're back here. Um, so yeah, anyway, this is the rivet nuts in the door frame all the way around there. So you can kind of see what we end up with. Um, so far less weight with that and these aluminum brackets than the door hinges. Um, so this is the door that had all the rust issues and I couldn't find like a very small angle iron like I wanted. So instead I used some solid metal rod. Um, I don't know if you remember, but this patch that I put in here, I mean, it was so warped. It was really bad. I put way too much heat into it and I warped the piss out of it. So um, I, I turned to the, uh, the experts that I know when it comes to auto body, which is my, my father. And uh, he said, he said to just start tapping it out from the backside, you know, use a hammer and just gently tap it and just keep tapping and tapping and tapping. Um, and I did that. I did, I, I banged on it. I, I didn't bang on it, but I tapped on it for a good, oh, I don't know, five, maybe 10 minutes or so. And just kept working it around from the worst spots outwards. Um, and that honestly took care of most of it. Um, and then I went ahead and I took this piece of solid metal rod and I just tacked this in place all the way across the bottom. And that's all I've done to it. And you can see here, it's, I mean, you can't tell that it's not straight, honestly. It turned out really good. So um, that'll take care of the rigidity issues we had in the base of this door. Um, the other thing I did is I put this little patch in here. These Crown Vicks on the back doors, they have these little holes. For I have no idea what reason, but if you don't have the, uh, the door moldings on the outside of the car, you can see right through the door into the uh, inner, inner door uh, panel. So I just took a, cut out a little piece of sheet metal and I just tacked that in there to close that up. And now to level that off, I'm just gonna take, I'm not gonna use Bondo because I, I just feel like with all the vibration this car sees on the track, um, the Bondo is just gonna crack right away. So I'm just gonna use some JB Weld and I'll smear that in there and level that off that way and then we can paint over it. Um, another thing I'd like to eventually do is cut this recess out and put some flat sheet metal in there um, and make it all smooth on the outside, but that's a project for another time. Um, as things are going right now, I'm running out of time quickly. Uh, the race is in, let's see here. Oh God, end of May. We're approaching the end of January. So I've only got a few months and now we've got to move. So I got some stuff to do. <laughs> so, all right, but uh, yeah, that pretty much finishes up the, uh, the door project aside from paint. And um, we'll, uh, we'll move on to the next thing in another video later on. So thanks for watching, guys.